Welcome back to Inside Ambition, a casual news show where we talk about all things Drexel. I'm Alexandra George. I know, I'm as shocked as you are that we are still here in the studio. Believe it or not, the spotted lanternflies and the Delta variant haven't gotten to us yet. Today we are talking about the summer winter community garden and Drexel's vaccine mandate. If you love plants and Pfizer, this episode is for you. But first, I wanted to ask the few students who are currently on campus how they feel about Drexel reopening this fall. Because, spoiler alert, we are still in the middle of a global pandemic. Hey everyone, it's Alex. I'm back on Lancaster Walk. This week, we're talking to students about the fact that campus is reopening this fall, the Delta variant, and the brand new SEPTA variant. So you're on campus, I'm on campus. This is very exciting. <laughs> it's exciting that we're getting back to reopening, but how do you feel about uh, classes going back to max capacity this fall? Um, it's great. I mean, you know, I really miss seeing my friends during the pandemic. Uh, I'm happy to have the gym back open in the library. It's a lot easier to study now. I feel like I'm starting to get a little closer to my tuition's worth compared to the last couple months. I'm actually super excited. I, I've definitely missed being back on campus. How do you feel about being back on campus in the middle of a global pandemic? It feels like it's almost over. Maybe I'm ambitious um, about it, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited because seeing people around is new. I've been here the whole time and it's been dead for probably a year, so it's nice to see people around. Ambitious, eh? Almost like your inside ambition. Uh, that's our show name. <laughs> I actually had to move back home with mom and dad. It was not the best decision. Well, it was the best decision for the time, not what I wanted. Yeah. But yeah, in the past couple of weeks, I've actually been back to campus more often. It's just being excited seeing everyone. I just wish more mask mandates were inside at least, because um, I'm a little skeptical with the Delta variant. But I'm excited to be back on campus and seeing people again. So I'm definitely nervous, but I'm a health science major. So we talk about COVID a lot in my classes, and I am putting my trust in like the vaccine and hoping that people like take the guidelines seriously again and like how they are recommending wearing uh, masks and that they do. How do you feel about how Drexel has been handling the pandemic and how students have been behaving? So I feel that Drexel has been handling it okay. I know they're doing their best to stay communicative with us but frequently it feels like their communications are just kind of empty and just kind of playing a role to look like they're being communicative and I don't necessarily think that they're actions and their words are always or their words are always matching their actions. Yeah. Uh, I understand the push for Drexel wanting to go back open so soon but I also do think that it is a little bit too soon. Um, I know that I have an in-person class right now this summer. I still didn't want one and I did have to get a COVID test less than a week ago because there was an exposure in my class already. Uh, so the fact that in the fall most classes are going to be back to be in person does not really instill a lot of confidence in me. I do feel better that they're requiring everyone to be vaccinated, um, but I do think that there's a lot of improvement to be done in terms of like tracking and especially when we bring a whole like new class of freshmen back on campus. Um, I think that there's some work to be done. How do you feel about the fact that they did not uh, significantly decrease tuition even though we weren't on campus? Uh, I mean, I wasn't very happy with it. It's already pretty expensive to go here. So uh, I'm a little jealous of my friends who decided to take some time away from school. Yeah. Kind of wish I had done the same, but it is what it is at this point. The economics there, I, I understand where Drexel's coming from if they aren't reducing tuition costs, but it definitely doesn't feel the same value. I don't know. It's too complicated for me to answer. <laughs> <laughs> very, very diplomatic answer there. I, I get it. John Fry is 100% watching this right now, so you don't want him to expel you. Do you feel like you've, uh, it was worth your tuition dollars to move back into your parents' house? No. Do you feel like there was still value to the education that you received over the course of the pandemic with the online courses, or do you feel like there was huge disparity? Uh, I feel like there was value there, but it took a lot more like from the individual to really find that value. For my core classes, yes, I think the professors cared. For more of the electives or like gen eds, I feel like the professors kind of were just going through the motions online, didn't really take the time to learn how to use Zoom. Uh, for my one English class, I had to teach my professor how to like record the video the first day. So it was definitely more of like, a, the value was not there for some of my like less important classes. I mean, yeah, obviously, because I learned a bit different. Like I like to be in person. It makes me stay a little bit more focused versus at home. My focus can really vary a lot. But, I mean, I got the same education. I did my homework, I studied, I took my exams, and I got through. Yeah. 
but I mean obviously there is a slight difference. Well I am a design major so I think it's gonna be a lot better um, in person to be back in the studio and to be working more hands-on with my professors and my classmates. I'm very excited to be doing that. So talking about your focus varying, another thing that's varying a lot is this virus, right? We've heard about several variants now. The Delta variant's really big in the news. Um, have you heard about the SEPTA variant at all? No, I have not. Have you heard anything about the SEPTA variant? Uh, I have not. I've only heard of the Delta variant. Is that local or Philly? <laughs> Not that I know of. I mean, I just heard it today in the news, but I feel like it might be if it's SEPTA. I know SEPTA variant. I don't know. That's the that's the subway system. It just kind of seems like. Is it a Greek letter? Maybe. No, I don't know. <laughs> I like that it's called SEPTA. Does that have to do with Philadelphia? I have <laughs> no idea. I guess we'll have to ask the CDC on that one. That feels very, very correct. That it's the <laughs> SEPTA variant. <laughs> What's your level of anxiety on the anxiety meter? How are you feeling? I'm honestly definitely nervous because I know that the Delta variant is pretty severe, but I would just, I guess, recommend that everyone get vaccinated as quickly as possible and hopefully that that will keep us safe enough. I'm not suggesting that we should stick to online learning forever. I just do think that Drexel could maybe give it a little more time or a little more flexibility considering they were, I was told that if I didn't want an in-person class yet, I didn't have to have one. And yet this summer term, when I did not want an in-person class, it was the only option that I had and I got exposed. And that was not very fun. Yay! <laughs> Personally, I don't think we're ready, but I like how Drexel starts school after all the other schools, so I hope that gives them more time to adjust, but I definitely want to take it slow and safe. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we can let all the other universities yeah. get COVID first. We're too ambitious for that. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for it, kind of like we just said, like I'm going to learn more and I'm really not too stressed about it. Um, I'm vaccinated. I hope other people get vaccinated too. And I mean, I'm just doing what I have to do to stay safe. I can only hope that other people do the same and that we'll all be safe and healthy out here. It makes me really worried because it is so nice to finally be able to see friends and go out to dinner and be in class. Yeah. Um, but the more that we hear about this variant and the less um, like guidance that's being published about it makes me very nervous for the fact that this could all just be taken away again. I think Drexel needs to do a little better about what they're doing if they actually really want to reopen. I know it's requiring the vaccine, but now with the new Delta variant and also with just in general, um, religious exemptions from vaccines, things like that. I think maybe we could give it a little more time. Well, survey's in. Looks like COVID still exists and Drexel's only doing a meh job at handling it. And worst part is no one laughed at my septa variant joke. I hope you all enjoyed it at home. Back to you in the studio, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Wow, just wow. I really need to work on those jokes. If you wanna see the footage that didn't make that cut, make sure to head over to our Instagram for some bloopers. Next up, we have all heard about the summer winter community garden that stands between campus and Powelton Village. But what is it and how can students get involved? Reporter Liv Jones is on the scene. Did you know we have a community garden right here on campus? Yep, that's right. Right across the street from North Hall is the summer winter community garden, one of the oldest community gardens in the Philadelphia area. Run entirely by volunteers, this fully organic garden is providing a nice city break for Philadelphians while still being right on Drexel's campus. For the winter months, there's also a greenhouse so gardeners can continue their work through the cold Philly winters. Garden plots are assigned on a first come first serve basis, but there's also another way Drexel students can get involved working in the garden. The culinary arts program offers a class every summer term called Kitchen Garden. This three credit course gives students the opportunity to have hands-on experience working in the garden, while also learning about the importance of plant nutrition as well as environmental stewardship. The harvested produce from this class is also used for other culinary arts classes throughout the summer term. The Summer Winter Community Garden is one of the many hidden gems here on our campus. If you want to get involved, you can request an application for a garden plot by emailing summerwintergarden at gmail.com. It's crazy to see how much is available to us on campus that we never take the time to learn about or, seen pandemic, have the opportunity to see in person. If you have an idea of something you want us to highlight on our show, especially if it's something our tuition dollars pay for, let us know in the comments below. For our final story, Eva Kraus is talking about Drexel's vaccine mandate and what this means for students. Hi, and welcome to today's discussion topic. My name is Eva, and this episode, we're gonna be sharing everything you need to know about vaccine requirements and guidelines at Drexel. 
As Drexel begins to open up more of our campus to students and teachers for the fall, we want to share all the info you'll need to know. Our top priority is staying safe and healthy as we start returning to in-person classes. So stay tuned because you don't want to miss this valuable COVID update. So August 1st was the deadline for Drexel students to submit their proof of vaccination by uploading an image of their documented vaccines, the dates they were administered, and the type of vaccine using the Drexel Health Tracker app or the website. On April 20th, President John Fry announced in an email that vaccinations would be required for both full-time and part-time students who spend time on campus, regardless of whether they're planning to live or work on or off campus, beginning this fall of 2021. However, the school has allowed for certain religious and medical exemptions, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This vaccination requirement also includes students in the College of Nursing and Health Professions and the College of Medicine who will need to be vaccinated for clinical placements. It is also emphasized that students planning on university-related domestic or international travel be vaccinated as well. Meanwhile, students enrolled through the Drexel University online will not need to show proof of vaccination since they will not be on campus for any reason though it is still encouraged that they get vaccinated for their own safety. As for international students who are unable to access an acceptable vaccine, Drexel Student Health will counsel and assist them through this transition. Students who receive the vaccine at the start of the term may be required to quarantine and receive a negative COVID-19 test prior to in-person classes or activities. Drexel accepts all COVID-19 vaccines that have been authorized for emergency use by the United States Food and Drug Administration. That includes two doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines or the single dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But fear not for our international students, Drexel will also be accepting the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Covishield vaccine from India, and the Sinovac and Sinopharm vaccines from China. But for full information, check out drexel.edu slash coronavirus. So coming back to the possibility for vaccine exemption, Drexel will allow such exemptions based on clearly documented medical or religious grounds. Only authorized Drexel personnel will know if you've been granted an exemption, but if you want to learn more, you can visit the link below. The exemption process takes up to two weeks, so if you haven't started yet, you better get on it. And if you choose to have an exemption, you still need to enroll in weekly COVID-19 testing. So if you haven't gotten vaccinated yet and would like to do so, Drexel is holding many different COVID-19 vaccination clinics on campus. For available clinic locations, you can visit their COVID-19 webpage, and if no clinics are listed, you can visit vaccines.gov to conveniently find a vaccination site near you. If you're worried about masking, we've got you covered. As of this recording, the city of Philadelphia recommends that you wear a mask indoors, even if you're vaccinated, but Drexel requires it. According to the New York Times, Philadelphia has experienced an uptick of COVID-19 cases. An average of 148 cases per day were recently reported, which is a 118% increase over the last two weeks. And with the rise of the Delta variant, the vaccine is more strongly encouraged than ever. Drexel admits that these COVID-19 guidelines may be a little difficult to track, stating, we recognize these may be confusing guidelines at a time of changing science. However, the university is maintaining these regulations with the hopes of providing a safe and welcoming atmosphere to the entire community in light of the seriousness of this pandemic. We hope this video leaves you with a better understanding of Drexel's COVID requirements for the fall, and I hope you and your families are staying safe during this recent increase in cases. That's all for today. See you soon, Dragons. Thanks, Eva. So much is still changing in reference to the pandemic, so it is super important that we are all doing our part by wearing masks, getting vaxxed and kicking at, <coughs> never mind, and staying engaged with Drexel's guidelines. If you liked today's episode, let us know in the comments below. And to see more from Inside Ambition, make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.